The other day I was out for a hike with my friend and we happened upon two wedding portrait shooters, one Canon, one Sony. And so my buddy asked, what you shooting? He's on an A7S III for portraits. It could be done. The Sony reptilian loser said that he prefers Sony. He used to shoot Canon, but he prefers Sony color signs. I, when I heard him say that, I threw up in my mouth and then said, go on, go on. You're lying to yourself, but that doesn't mean Sony isn't the best at some things. It's not color. All I want is the perfect camera. All I want is the perfect camera. After shooting with easily the worst camera of our time, the 6D Mark II, I fell in love. I fell in love with them colors. Beautiful, beauty engaged. So, what we've done here. I've tried really hard to replicate Canon colors in an S cine tone like matter. I tweaked a bunch of stuff. Did I succeed? Next to me is a loser. Not as colored as me. Could we have Canon colors on a Sony camera in camera? I think we've done it. Nobody cares. Move on. So I took this A7S III out with my Sony 200 to 600 with 1.4 times teleconverter for a little nature hike. Got a bunch of epic footage. We just have to go over some of it and then we'll talk a little Sony life. No, we won't. We won't talk. As the majestic night heron looks upon the swamp, a dragonfly dares tempt it. Tempt it in a fist fight. Will he fight this day to the death? No. He does not tempt fate this night. I moved around for a worse shot, and we got it. He blinked. He blinked. I could see him through the leaves. Oh, that is magic. Now, what I'm noticing, I got a bunch of footage coming on. I got much closer to another Night Heron. Look at the throat movements. I think they mimic sounds to tempt fish. I got some stuff coming that you'll see it. He's like wiggling in the water. So that's a, a fish tempting sound. He's going, and then the fish are like, what is that song? And then they go to their death. Now look at the sharpness of this 4K 120p. I do some comparisons with the HD 240. It's not terrible. There's some moments where it's like, that's not bad. It's not very sharp or nice, but sometimes you need that 240 frames per second for when a dragonfly falls off its leaf. And he's like, oh, well. Sometimes, like, 120's not enough. I know for normal life, like human beings, 60 frames is probably enough. They're just walking, whatever. 120, it's like, oh, overkill, buddy. But for nature, you want the fastest possible. 480, preferably. Maybe, not for most shots. Sure, it looks like 720p wrapped in a 480p blanket, but I don't know, man. This isn't 1080p, obviously. There's so many cameras that promise 1080p high frame rate footage, and it's never actually 1080p. I don't know what they do in camera to lie to us, but it's a clear and obvious lie. Wait, balance. What happened? Now, I thought I saw a man in the forest, but when I got the footage back, I was like, He's not even there. What is this the shot that I saw him in? Cause he's gone, clearly. I don't know. Like, did he have camouflage on or something? Like, I saw him, I thought, before we get to the most magical footage of our time with the night hair on capturing a fish and dancing for us, we have a frog scratching his belly with his right leg. I'm focused on his left leg. Uh, I suck at this. Now, I caught one of the coolest things I've ever seen. This fly, there's a dragonfly, and then a fly comes in and I can't even describe it. He's flying this way and then like does a flip and lands. I did not know flies could do this. Look at this guy. He's coming. That was the coolest thing I've ever seen in my life. He flies up, does a flip. That is spectacular. I can't believe that. And the fly was like, hey, oh, oh my god, oh, that scared me. Oh, that scared the life out of me. Now, as much as Sony Color Science could make a baby throw up in its mouth, it's nice detail in the birds. And you don't know any better. I don't know, I'm seeing like greens that aren't green at all. It's always a muddy yellowish green. Sony don't play right with the greens. 
but the detail, if you just look at the woodpecker, you can see details, and it's pleasant. Just ignore the green, the yellow greens, the mud, mud leaves, and you'll be fine. I tell you, I'm so happy with this setup. It's just so magical and fun to use, and look at those flutter flaps on that bee. Something with the perfect shutter speed on that one. It just looked so magical and different. That's the 240. You need 240 for bees. I don't, don't even try to go at a 120. You can't see a damn thing. They levitate, by the way. They're not flying. They're frequency pulsing, and then they levitate. It's proven by science. I've heard it. I've seen the articles. But I'll tell you, it's a dream lens. It really is. I'm considering getting a replacement foot just for... I know they come out further. That might be nice. I feel like I could stabilize better if it was out here. And then it's just a, a thumb on the zoom ring, and then this finger does that. Pretty swift. It's like, it's heavy, but you totally get used to it. You're just walking around as long as you follow the monkey strength way of life. And you'll have the, the gunk, the arm gunk. You could do it. But compared to any other wildlife system, I just feel most at home with Sony. I know I'm going to get the shot. Getting focus is really fun and easy and good. It's just heavy, but you get used to it. For Fuji, it's like the back button. I, it's not as fast as like Sony. I'm auto-focusing and then just turn it off and then find touches. No, back on. And it will track. It's nice. If it's a big bird in the scene, it's like, okay, I'll just auto-focus this. And it's nice to have. Okay, so it wasn't till the end of the day that I see another night heron. It could be the same one, but completely different locations. I walked far away, maybe he flew. I think they can fly, so he might have beat me there. I zoomed right in on him. 600 mils, 1.4 times converter. This is 924 mils. My goodness, the demon eyes. Oh wow, Satan's eyes. Satan's choice, right there. He's, he's going to hell. Even if you punch in on it for the slow winking goodness. Oh man, 12 megapixels, you can punch. You can punch right on in there. Don't pretend you can't. I switched over to 240 frames per second. It's just much more magical, but you can definitely see the details side by side with 4K 120p. It's like, okay, wow, I'll never use that again. But you don't mind using it. You get used to, you just gotta know that it's not very good but sometimes it looks good enough. So this guy was very comfortable. There was like a group of people looking at him. We're on a bridge and we're probably like within eight feet of him and we're just waiting for him to catch a fish and get that moment. There's a bunch of people with phones. I'm like, what are you guys doing? What, even if you catch the moment, what are you, are you gonna show that to your neighbor? He's gonna move out. So there were many tense moments where I'm waiting for him to do like, oh, he's getting ready. He's about to pounce. Okay, press record. No, he's not doing it. Now this is that tempting thing. He's doing something to lure fish. He is fishing right now. He's doing a little, hey, 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 come, come here, hey. Come, come to me. Hey, I got food. Hey, you want some food, guys? Hey, hey. He has a strange foot. I don't know if he has like, a missing toe or something? Something's not right with that. Doesn't look, but he makes do with what he has. What's your excuse? You lazy ass. Won't even go get your wife flowers because your back hurts. You're a loser. So I must have been there for like half an hour waiting for him to pounce. He kept looking like super intense and then he would calm down and he's like, okay, I'm getting ready to go. You can see his head moving like a gimbal. Oh, that is gimbal-like head. Oh, I should put my camera on his head to get the most stable vlog ever. And then it happened. I actually walked away and got a bunch more footage and then came back. I was like, how are you doing? You're still here. He, it was so lightning quick. I'm surprised I even pressed record in time. I just pressed it and then it was like, bro. I thought I would be able to like see him about to do it. And then I press record and then get the action. Not even close. Here's in real time. Thankfully, we have 240 frames per second recorded.
happy with this system. I think the search for the perfect wildlife cam is over for now. This is it. I was looking at like Z cam and weird shit, black magic with the raw crop. This is the best all around system. Sony a7S III, 200, 600, optional 1.4 times converter for those moments. You'll want them sometimes. What could you want more? So now I do wonder, it would be nice to not have to switch lens, just keep this as my wildlife, but unless a Cinetone has blown us away today, the odds aren't good, but it could have. And if it didn't, I, I need a studio YouTuber camera. I could use Olympus, but be real with yourself. That's for outdoors. I need a C100 Mark II, and then we move on with our life. Why do I have a feeling that the C100 color science is bad? It's so old, but I'm thinking I'm getting color science from Canon and it's like, oh, that was before they made it good. It's all magenta. I've seen magenta stuff, but Canon has a yellowish tone. I've added yellow. Does it just look like I'm sick? Come on. So not bad zone. You suck at human faces, but for wildlife, not bad. Not bad. I'm happy for now. The gods have been appeased. So, what do you think? Is there a better system? Nikon 200 to 600? Could it match it? I don't know, man. I don't know, man. Just the ease of use. With Canon, it's just not the same. It's not a one button switch to manual focus. It was like holding it to manual focus. Ow. Talk about thumb cramps. Not this time of the month. I'm gonna leave. After you buy a Camera Conspiracies t-shirt. You won't regret that choice. I'll tell you that much. Thank you, Aiden Camera, for the sale. I should have mentioned that earlier. Nobody's watching anymore. I'm a bad business partner. I'll leave.